All right, hello everyone. Welcome back to our second session for SPDC. Um, yesterday, um, or more like our previous session, we spoke about the uh, BP format in general. Um, and it seems like some of you are already familiar with the concept or the idea of debating, at the very least in a tree versus tree format. So yesterday was an introduction to the different um, elements within BP that might be different or might be unfamiliar for those uh, who have never done it before. I think some of you were introduced to the idea of extensions, and some of you had really good questions about extensions and how you handle it. So I kind of like that. You are thinking strategically. So for today, um, it has less to do with BP specifically, but more like with the concept of burdens in general and how figuring out burdens would help you win debates, not just in BP, but in any format itself. I just think it is a useful thing for us to actually talk about uh, that we could apply in our exercises a bit later or within the debate uh, sessions we will have later. Okay. Um, so before I get into this whole grand idea of what exactly are burdens, I think there are several things that I want to ask, and it would be great if some of you sort of like respond and interact so that this doesn't become a one-way lecture instead. All right, so just a very, very simple question. Do any of you play other games or sports? Um, do you have other hobbies and so on? I just want to sort of like see if you people have like, a competitive strike in you if you have an idea what things going on. Let's see what do we have here. Basketball. Okay, all right. So Ambrose plays basketball. Um, anyone else? Are you into anything else? I play a lot of games too, but I just want to see what other games you will do. So hockey, chess, right? Netball. Okay, uh... I'm going to admit some of the answers are quite boring. I thought I expected something spicier, but that's okay. Now, the reason why uh, I asked this question is because people have a tendency of forgetting that debating at the end of the day uh, is a game. Um, Assassin's Creed. Okay, uh, that's interesting. I, I used to play Assassin's Creed too, um, but yeah, it's been some time since I played that. Um, I do play other things. Like I do play like a TCG called Magic the Gathering. Um, I really enjoy that. I don't know if the rest of you do those kind of things. Um, but the point is that when it comes to games, everyone wants to actually do well in it. Uh, they want to actually win. And for you to win, you have to figure out how do you want to win the game. And unfortunately, for a lot of people, they tend to forget that competitive debating at the end of the day is another competitive activity. It's not just about you know performing the best speech in front of people, though it helps. Having good English is part of it. Um, knowing how to sequence your arguments would be quite helpful. Um, knowing the world and how to use that information can be quite useful in debating. But if you have no idea what you need to do, um, that is kind of tough for you to win the game. And if you keep it in mind that it is a game, that it's easier for you to think strategically in this case. So it's the same case as any other hobbies whatsoever. And when it comes to hobbies, I guess it's a bit more abstract. And I'll talk about it about that later, why that is important. Um, now, before I move on to burdens, you know, moving on from games whatsoever, can somebody tell me what is the goal of a game of football? What's the point? Uh, so how do you win a game of football? Can someone tell me that? What do you need to do if you play football against another person, uh, another team? So I'll admit it, I'm not much of a sports guy, but this is a good analogy that could help you imagine things. Can someone tell me that? Um, to kick the ball into the goal. Yes, that is part of it. But I think that is an element to winning it. It's not the way to win it. To score. Okay, yes. Uh, yeah, so Israel got it right. To score more goals 
than um, the opponents. I would prefer if everyone reply publicly in chat rather than um, sending direct messages to me uh, because the rest of the um, session might not have any idea who am I responding to. So just try to, um, yeah, just try to answer everyone in the meeting instead. That will be better. Uh, so I reset strategy. So this is also a mistake a lot of people have. They think that, oh, to play football, having good strategy is the way for you to win the game. But the reality is that those are things that help you win the game. It doesn't actually make you win the game. So the way for you to win the game in football is to score more goals than your opponent to make sure that you have um, more, a higher score in comparison to your opponent. So the mistake that a lot of people think about football is that, oh, you need to have the flashiest kicks. You need to make sure that you control the ball all the time. They help you win the game, but you're not going to win the game because of that. So you may control the ball 90% of the time in a game. But if you don't score and you don't do anything with it, you would still lose the game. So the same logic also happens when it comes to competitive debating. You may have the flashiest speeches. You may have the best English in the room. But if you're not scoring goals and you're not convincing me and you aren't able to identify what uh, identify the right logic that you have for you to win the game, then you are not playing the game. Um, and this is a mistake a lot of younger competitive debaters make. And the best way for you to make sure that you are actually playing the game is to figure out burdens within a debate. But let's try to move on to something else instead. Let's see. Um, how do you win a, a game of capture the flag? Uh, I'm not so sure if games today have this mod. Uh, I'm not so sure. But back then, when I used to play different kinds of games, I used to have this thing called Capture the Flag um, rather than just a deathmatch. So what's the point of capturing the flag? So how do you win that game of capturing the flag? Uh, protect your own flag till the end. I think that is part and parcel of it. Um, yes, that is one element of it. Anything else? Capture the flag, take other flags with teams, and bring it to your base. Yep, okay. Uh, yeah, so you capture the flags while defending yours. Capture your opponent's flags. So technically, you could go out and kill people, uh, sorry, kill your enemies whatsoever when you are um, going after your opponent's base and so on. Technically, you can do that, uh, but you won't automatically win if you just spend your time shooting at people because you would have that one lonely guy running away with the flag and winning the game instead. Sometimes you might be the one and only person left in the game and you are still carrying the flag, you would still win. The same logic also applies to debating. The other side may have 10 different arguments that are grand and they could try to um, flood the debate within it, but they might not answer the burden of the debate or the main question of the debate. Sometimes you might have one question that answers that single burden and you would still win the debate because you are fulfilling the objective of the game. So that's quite similar to how you play capture the flag uh, in those games, in that sense. All right. Um, so some games may not have immediate win cons or win conditions. Sometimes it's not that obvious or what you need to do to win. So the games that I mentioned before, like football, if you play football, it's kind of obvious you need to score goals because the goal is right in front of you. Um, when you play capture the flag, the, the, the name of the game, uh, sorry, the objective of the game is in the name of the game. It's quite obvious. But there are some games that might not be intuitive. Um, they're not that immediate. They're not staring in your face. So for example, a game like Minecraft. So how do you win in Minecraft? Can somebody tell me that? Can you win in Minecraft? <laughs> Kill the Ender Dragon. <laughs> Reach the end. I guess so. <laughs> you know, whatever. Uh, but... Technically, okay, so that is one win con and so on. Yeah, so Elliot got it right. It all depends on how you define win. So the same case when it comes to debating. So in debating, sometimes the win con is not that obvious. The win con 
um, yeah, uh, it only ends when uh, you stop playing. That's what, so Zool is right in that sense. It's a sandbox game. But the point is that you can still have fun within that sandbox game. And you need to figure out objectives when to do so. So you can't exactly win Minecraft in that sense. Or it's one of those games where it's closer to a simulation. It's it's a sandbox game, like what Zul mentioned earlier. In the sense that um, how you play the game is very dependent to what um, you think actually brings you fun. Or probably your friends have an objective. You make your own server, a bunch of you decided to build something, and that's how you would win in a game, uh, sort of win or have fun in Minecraft in that sense. So the definition of fun is very dependent on the group. Uh, and I'll show it a bit later how this is related to debating a bit. Okay, so a lot of us don't have true goals in a game. You know, sometimes when I play a game like GTA and so on, I play to have fun. I can follow the story if I want to, um, or I could just go on GTA online uh, and mess around with things with friends, whatever. So everything is very dependent on my idea of fun. So we then have to figure out how do we achieve the abstract idea of fun in this case. And we need to set something that is fair so that everything is fun. Because if the task that we agree on is actually quite hard, uh, then it's kind of hard for all of us to actually have fun in the process. And the same logic also applies to debating, where the debate needs to be something that is fair, something that uh, all of us could approach, so then the debate will be productive. The debate will be healthy in that sense. And if you define it according to things that are unfair, um, so let's say that, um, let me think of something that might be unfair. Uh, for some reason, you might say that this house believes that murder is wrong. I don't know, probably I wouldn't run that motion, but you start saying stuff like, uh, opposition needs to say why murder is not wrong or whatsoever. Uh, can they argue? Maybe. But will it be fair and fun? Probably not. It's probably not the best thing for you to do uh, in that round. So even as the prime minister, you get to set the context of things. You still need to make sure that things are fair for everyone within the debate itself. So it is the same case like how you play games like Minecraft where you define what is the idea of fun with your friends because it's an open-ended game, a sandbox game, um, and so on. So in our last session, I compared the idea of debating with you know, tower building and defense, um, games like that. But instead, you swap out um, these towers for opinions instead. Um, but what is our tower in a game of debating? Isn't that obvious? Let's admit that. So in a more abstract game like debating, we get to define our win costs. And that's why debating is so fun. That sense because we get to tell the judge, uh, we win this debate because we did this, or this is what our objectives are in this debate. So, that objective, those goals, that is what we call burdens. You pick your burdens, pick something that is fair for everyone, pick something that is easy for all of us, and you answer that. And the team that proves their burdens win the game. So, basically, debating is a game where you get to write the rules of who wins or loses the game. The problem with a lot of younger debaters, they would just go in, argue, 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 but I kind of forgot that you have to tell the room, what are we doing here? And a lot of younger debaters or inexperienced debaters, they would just come in and argue, uh, thinking that these five different arguments will automatically leave, give them the win. And when the other team also doesn't do burdens, then it will be quite... Um, a boring debate in that sense where I would just have to see what you people throw at me, <coughs> then I use my um, understanding of the motion instead. Uh, but it's good discipline for all of you to come in and tell me um, what are you trying to achieve? Because there might be a point in your speech where what you are arguing might not fit what the judge thinks that you're supposed to do. So if you can tell me early on what you are trying to achieve, then 
you could always work your argument towards that burden, work towards that goal. And when you work towards that goal, then you would be closer to winning the debate instead. And then your opponents would have to stop you from achieving those goals. Um, you can also do the same and say, wait a minute, your burden is X, Y, Z. You can push burdens to people instead. But the point is that we need to identify all our burdens, all our objectives, and make it clear for everyone. So when you start the debate, when you give the context for things and you tell people the burdens, they have an idea what you are doing. Um, and this is why I think um, debating is beautiful in that sense. You get to craft your objective and tell the room that I just want to achieve this. But of course, it has to be fair. Though. It has to be fair for everyone on what the burden is. And you play the game in that sense. So what kind of burdens can you pick? So because debating is quite abstract, uh, there is no one single burden. And it's very dependent on the motion. So it's kind of like how when you play um, different games, you might have different levels to that game. And you get to choose different levels. So the environment changes within the game. The same case when it comes to debating too. Uh, the levels change and th those levels are the debate motions. But there are some rough archetypes. So for example, if you play a game that has, um, I know, something like plant the ball or whatever it is, um, sometimes the way for you to get to the bomb is probably different in a different game instead. Or when you play capture the flag, in a different level, the flags are uh, placed in very different uh, places instead. Um, the level changes how you play the game, but there are certain ideas on what you're supposed to do. Hang on. Wait, I think I skipped through it. All right, so how exactly do you... Sorry, yes. Uh, so how do you identify burdens in a debate? So uh, the first one, of course, is to identify your position. What you are supposed to do, um, which group that you are in. Number two, most obvious one, but I'll be surprised that some of you don't do this because you have a rough idea on what the motion is. You read the motion and then ask yourself, what would be a fair goal for you to defend? What would be a fair goal for your opponents to defend? If you don't know your team positions, then you might accidentally argue for the wrong, wrong thing. So it says, uh, um, if you are playing uh, CSGO, you need to know whether you are counter-terrorist or terrorist or whatever. Identify your position and then you know your task. Don't be the kind of person that in the middle of the game, um, you're trying to find a bomb and it turns out you're on the counter-terrorist side of the game. So the same case when it comes to debating, don't be that guy who doesn't know their position in that sense. So um, unlike a game like CSGO, like I mentioned earlier, um, you get to define what is the goal first. All right, so here are some common burdens that you could try to achieve in a game. Of course, it can be quite flexible. Uh, you don't have to worry too much about the details for this right now. Uh, I can share the slides for this, uh, but these are some of them. Um, number one, X causes more harm than good. Um, so of course, the opposite can also be the case. Uh, it could be Y brings more benefit than harm. Um, so that is one burden that could be applied in many debates. Um, a second burden is X is greater than Y. Whatever you're defending might be better than what your opponent is proposing. It could be the case. Or it could be X is the best way to solve problem Z. Um, we have a problem that all of us agree on. I think my solution is the best way to solve the problem instead, and I am defending that. So that's another way that you could also carry out the game. Or it could be DX is good for the main stakeholder. It's pretty close to the first one where X causes um, more harm. The opposite of X brings more benefit than harm. Uh, but basically, you are trying to zero into a very space, specific stakeholder or specific group of people. Um, and um, that is your win con, in that sense. And E, and I think this is one of the tougher ones. Uh, because I think it's quite abstract. And it, because you can't exactly measure it mathematically, um, but X is the morally right thing to do. Uh, even though this is actually my favorite kind of debate, 
because there's a lot of strategy involved, etc. But for younger debaters, I can imagine how it might be quite complicated because it's kind of hard for younger debaters to imagine things without, let's say, seeing a coin system or um, number of issues being stacked and so on. Um, so while I think it's an interesting debate, I do think it's also one of the tougher ones. Uh, but these are some of the more common burdens, even it. Uh, it does not mean that these are the only burdens or objectives in a game of debating. There are many more objectives out there. I'm just saying that these are some of the common ones that you can use if you struggle to figure out what are the burdens in this case. Okay, so let's take several examples here. So uh, the burdens that I displayed on screen here are actually um, the most simple version of these burdens. Um, they can be further fleshed out by including more context, by including the problem statement, whatever it may be. So, but anyway, let's take a look at this motion. This house would ban cars from city centers. So if I were to be in the government bench, my burden at the end of the day is to prove that cars bring a lot more harms to city centers and that it a then that it necessitates a ban. That we need to eventually ban cars because the amount of harm that it carries, um, whatever it could be, could be in the form of really horrible traffic, pollution, um, or that public transport is a probably better solution to urban life, whatever it, whatever it is, they all fall under the government's burden. So this is my objective. All my arguments, whatever it may be, must answer this burden. This is my objective. This is my win con in the game. This is the flag that I'm supposed to capture and defend. The government's burden is what I'm supposed to do. Um, in the opposition, my burden would be uh, the benefit of having cars in city centers outweigh the harms of cars. So this is what I'll probably say that stuff like um, cars provide us with uh, provide us with valuable freedom. Cars help us to navigate within city centers. Uh, cars are a good solution for cities that don't care about public transport. You may want to say that you want to invest in public transport, but in a lot of places, it is not something that is immediate. Um, even when we want to wait for the ART in Kuching, it takes ages for us to eventually see it. And we're not seeing it yet. It took us a lot of time to eventually see um, a demonstration of the ART instead. So um, it shows that cars still empower a lot of citizens within the process. Or people just like the idea of freedom and they like to control the cars. Whatever it is, all of that is part of um, what I need to argue to eventually achieve my larger burden, my win con, my objective, my goal. Whatever I do, whatever I argue, it needs to hit this instead. Let's take a look at example number two. All right, example number two. This house believes that online education should be made the default rather than the option. All right, just to clarify what the motion is saying, because I can understand if some of you might not immediately get the motion. What it's saying is that um, it's not like physical education goes away. It's just that it is uh, an option that you can choose, an afterthought. So the motion is saying that online education, like going on Zoom or whatever it is, should be what most people imagine education should. Um, and I think this one, these burdens are, um, they are quite straightforward. So in the gov bench, the burden is turning online education into the default brings more benefit than harms. So I just need to give a shopping list of things to show that there are more benefits than harms. So this burden is actually quite easy because you could imagine it in a mathematical sense that, oh, this person has 20 different benefits. There's more benefit than harms. So then the game becomes easier in that sense. Um, opposition, you can also do that. Um, uh, opposition, um, it's the opposite instead. Um, however, um, however, 
there are times where you could also reframe the burden. So maybe in the government bench, you could say that, well, online education uh, benefits the most vulnerable group, group of people. So this is quite close to what I mentioned earlier about um, stakeholders um, early on. Where is it again? Yeah. So the first example that I showed on screen just now was practically A, that X causes more harm than good. But then you could also recharacterize things and say that X is good for the main stakeholder. So in this case, you might say that, well, online education benefits a lot of underprivileged people who are locked out from quite a number of educators geographically. Uh, and that's good enough. We don't have to win everything uh, in this game. It's kind of like how I don't need to make sure that all of my friends are still alive at the end of a capture the flag game. I just need to make sure that I hold on to the flag within a certain time period. And that is good enough. The same case here. I don't have to win every single thing within a debate. It's good enough that I just win that one single objective that is important. Um, and I, of course, have to demonstrate why that is the objective in this discussion. Okay, let's take a look at example number three. This house would ban teachers um, from going on strikes. Okay, ignore the grammatical error that you see on screen. Um, but in the government bench, um, the burden could be teachers going on strikes bring more harm than good. Um, so all my other arguments under there uh, in the sense of um, teachers going on strikes means that kids will miss out classes or it introduces a political element to education that some parents might not be happy with or um, it means that they are ignoring other possible channels um, that could eventually defend their rights in that sense. Whatever it is, all of that sort of like lead towards this eventual government's burden. In the opposition, um, you could then argue it is morally right for teachers to be allowed to go on strikes. Um, I forgot the word allowed here, so my mistake in that sense. So you might say that, yes, it may bring a lot of harms to the rest of us, but it's kind of unfair that teachers aren't able to go out and demand better pay, demand better treatment. It's part and parcel of a worker's right to force people to the negotiation table. Because there are times where um, the higher-ups on top might just ignore what teachers have to say and won't even bother to discuss anything that is important with teachers. So the only way that you could grab their attention is to not show up for work, to go on strike, um, to actually protest instead. So that is an option. So in the opposition, you could say that, yes, it would harm quite a number of us. And yes, um, some people's schooling or education will be hurt in the process, but we still think that having this avenue, having this ability to force people to negotiate with them um, is a moral right. And they should have the ability for that. In fact, you could argue it's kind of selfish for the rest of us uh, to think that teachers should always serve us um, and we make it hard for them to fight for their rights in that process. So this is where um, you don't have to win the debate about whether it brings more harm than good, whatever. You just need to defend the idea on what is morally right, or what is morally wrong, and how some of us probably should sacrifice um, some of the things we need in order for some people to live their lives instead. Okay, uh, let's go through one more example uh, before we take a break. Um, okay, so for this motion, this house prefers a world where most people do not care about leaving a legacy behind. Um, so this is an example of um, X is greater than Y kind of motion or the kind of burdens you could say that position one is way more better than position two in this case. Um, hang on, let's go back to example three because Ambrose had a question. Um, so your question is, they can I say the burden for Gov is that there are better ways? Um, yes, you could do that. But ask yourself, is it easy for you? Does it make it harder for you to win the game? And sometimes you have to be a bit more strategic and say that 
uh, well, we don't have to show that there are better ways to fight for rights. Um, we just think that it's kind of unfair that you impose harm onto people. It's kind of unfair that you are hurting another child's education. What if SPTM is in two months and this teacher decided to go and protest? Is it a good thing? So um, you don't have to show all the other alternative ways. You can admit that, yes, it is tough. Uh, yes, uh, it actually hurts them. You can even admit that. Uh, but all you have to do is just show that it causes more harm, that it's not worth it in that case. So can you say that uh, in the government bench that there are other avenues? Yes, you can. But do we really want to get into that conversation considering how tough to prove it? So if it's so hard for you to prove, they don't play that game. It's kind of like how when you play football and if you realize that um, the other side is a really good striker, if you're just going to let the other striker get through to your side of the, um, of the field, you're not going to win the game in the end. Why do that? Yes, that person might not score immediately and you have a good goalkeeper, but why stress out your goalkeeper? It's the same logic that applies here. Can you actually say that there are other avenues? Yes. Is it intuitive? I doubt it. So you can start being strategic in that sense and try to pick and choose burdens that are more strategic. And you don't want them, uh, especially opposition, to use that and say, okay, prove to me that you can actually have these other avenues. How sure are you someone from the Ministry of Education would sit down on the same table, at the same table with a teacher to negotiate after being vilified for the past few months. I don't think it's an easy thing to prove. And I don't think of, uh, you want to give ammunition to opposition uh, for that. But I don't know. It depends on your context, depends on the room, depends on how you argue it. It's very dependent on that. So try to be uh, strategic and pick easier burdens for yourself. Right, let's move on to the next one. Uh, this house prefers a world where most people do not care about leaving a legacy behind. Uh, I do think this is pretty straightforward. I do think, um, despite its straightforwardness, a lot of people think that the debate is actually more complicated. And this one is just to show that X is greater than Y. Uh, so in the government bench, you just need to show that it is better for people to not care about their legacies. And that is good for five different reasons. Um, or this position is better in comparison to what their position is. Uh, the opposition is also the same. So in the opposition, you just need to flip. You just need to say that Y is greater than X. So in this case, a world where most people care about how they are perceived after death, it's probably better for most of us. Maybe because it leads to people being more hardworking because they want to actually um, be remembered in a good way. Maybe it would mean that parents would want to leave a good inheritance or name for their kids and most people would react to this positively. I don't know. But those are some of the arguments that I could use to eventually lead towards the win for the opposition. And that dest destination is what you see on screen here. Uh, a world where most people care about how they are perceived after death is better for most of us, in that sense. Okay, uh, so those are some examples of burdens. We're going to have a bunch of exercises that are related to this in a bit. Um, but um, for now, um, I think... Uh, okay, wait, I forgot. There's another angle there for... Okay, all right. So... Um, early on, I did mention the different kinds of burdens that you may have, but some motions require you to have mechanisms. What I mean by mechanisms is basically the way that you carry out something. I will have a different session where I talk more about mechanisms and context or whatever it is. Uh, but the point is that if you want to carry out something, people need to be able to imagine how you want to carry it out. So then you have to describe how you carry it out. You don't have to write laws. You don't have to write a full-on policy, but you just have to give a rough idea on how it works. Uh, for example, when you give directions to people, you don't need to explain in full detail, like a GPS, like 
300 meters turn here and so on. You just need to give people a rough idea. Go down the third, um, third alley, turn left, and you will get to wherever you want. Uh, but when you explain your mechanism, you add additional burdens for yourself. You need to show that your mechan mechanism sort of works. Um, of course, to a f uh, fair extent, you cannot imagine something that is out of the realm of possibility unless the motion says so. So it needs to be fair to how the world operates, whatever it is. Um, and B, of course, um, you need to prove that your mechanism brings you closer to the solution or at least solve most of the problems. So you could say that here are benefits of X, Y, Z, but eventually you need to show that your mechanism works, that you can carry it out, that you can show how it is closer to the solution. You don't have to say that it would solve every single thing. I'm pretty sure there isn't anything in this world that would solve everything, but you could say that, well, at the very least, we solve one problem or we are closer to the solution. This is closer to the ideal world and that's good enough. We don't have to win everything within it. So in the government bench, if you are proposing a mechanism, sometimes in the opposition, you have to, uh, but basically you have to show it works. You have to show how it's closer to the solution. Um, considering that in the opposition, you also have to take into account several things. So in the opposition, whatever your burden is, it is also very dependent whether you agree with the problem. Because if you agree with the problem, then your debate becomes different. Your debate then becomes about the mechanism that the government bench might have. There is a possibility that you might disagree in how they carry out something because it might not be effective, because it might hurt a lot of people in the process, or because we just cost too much, um, that it's infeasible in that sense. Or it might be morally wrong because some people uh, are part of the trade-off. Some people will suffer because of the mechanism. And so, on. so then you might say that, I agree there is a problem, but I disagree with how you want to solve it. Um, whatever everyone agree the problem is when the motion comes out. Sometimes the problem is obvious. Uh, sometimes the government will bring out the problem uh, but the point is that um, everyone might want to describe what's the problem. Even in the opposition, if the government bench doesn't actually describe the problem, you can also describe the problem. But also know that a problem always exists. That's why we have these debate motions. There's an issue. That's why we are debating. So whatever the problem is, if you were to agree with the problem, then you could focus on the mechanism instead. Um, this then leads to another uh, another burden that you could use. And that additional burden is that you could explain why you have a better mechanism or a better solution. That sense. Um, so it's just like how you have conversations with your family. You're trying to solve a problem. So let's say that um, your family is short on cash. Let's say that's the problem. Um, and then someone comes in and say, oh, we should sell the car. Um, and you might not be happy. Wait a minute. Why are we selling the car? We need the car to go to work, to go to school and so on. And you might have a better mechanism. So you would propose a better mechanism. So in order for you to win that discussion within the family, you need to show that why selling the car is a bad idea. And at the same time, why you have a better solution. Because if you complain and complain and complain about people's solutions, but you don't have an answer, then you just sound like a very negative Nancy. Um, you just sound like somebody who is complaining, but you don't have an answer for this. Your answer doesn't have to be perfect, but your answer can be slightly better than selling off the family car, which might be a bad idea. Maybe the solution would probably be that... Um, I'm going to help out at our shop. So we don't need to hire another person. That could be a solution. I don't know. Uh, but it shows that you have another mechanism. Alternatively, you could say, there is no real problem here. 
status quo today or the world today is actually good enough uh, or the problem can be ignored. Or we could say that, yes, uh, we might not have enough cash, but I think it's something that we could weather through. You might be able to tell your parents that, tell them that uh, we don't have to sell the car. Um, the car is good enough for us uh, to help us go through our tough times. Um, we can ignore this problem for now uh, because we only have uh, this, our lack of money is only because we might not have enough business for the next three months. Maybe that might be the issue within the family. So you might say that this is not a problem. We just need to be aware of what we are spending in the process. Um, okay, so um, for now, um, wait, I'm going to ignore this part. So, so far, I understand if there is a lot of information. So I think for now, uh, let's take a break, take a 15 minute break, um, come back. Feel free to ask me any questions. Um, do tell me if you think uh, things are a bit heavy and I understand it's only 10 o'clock in the morning. You're still trying to cobble things together. That is fine. All you have to understand is that when it comes to debating, we need win cons, figure out our burdens, figure out objectives. That's good enough. Okay, so uh, do whatever you need. Go have your breakfast. Um, go drink for a bit, um, uh, and come back in fifteen minutes. So take a break. Don't forget to rehydrate. I'll see you people in a bit. 